But let's talk now about what I like to call lawless Britain, because it's not just lawless, it's now Wild West Britain, our great nation suffering from a slow burn collapse of law and order. And I suspect this may have something to do with the abject failure of our politicians to protect borders and our clergy being hoodwinked by sex offenders and criminals to win asylum. The nation's shoplifting epidemic accelerates to new heights. Take a look at this co-op in West Yorkshire where a trio of machete-wielding gangsters emptied the tills. And this coincides with revelations by the retailer of a 44% increase in theft, abuse and attacks on staff in 2023 alone. The co-op director of public affairs was on Talk TV earlier today and this is what he had to say about his store's experience. Fred, what you're seeing there is the result of eight, nine, ten years of effective decriminalisation of retail crime by the police. Um, the, the police in the first half of last year weren't attending in 70, 80% of incidents that, that we uh, reported. So I'm afraid what you're seeing is a very common experience of far too many co-op colleagues and retail workers. And that, I'm afraid, is the problem. The police are quite often getting in the neck for not doing their jobs properly, but what on earth has been done to this country so that we've got sort of teams of these horrible, ghastly, mostly very youthful young men uh, wearing balaclavas, covering their faces, going into shops with sometimes guns, sometimes knives, sometimes bats, and just doing and taking whatever the hell they like. Let's talk to former Metropolitan Police Detective Chief Inspector Mike Neville. Mike, a very good evening to you. Um, I know night. we have these conversations on far too regular a basis, I'm afraid, but this is another brazen attack captured on TV uh, cameras and they don't even seem to care because they're all covered up. You can't be identified. Um, you know, I see no way to stop this short of actually putting, you know, armed guards on shops. Well, the trouble is, Mike, of course, is that uh, too many of these uh, thieves well know that... Uh, the police are going to attend, as we've heard, about 20% of these incidents. Even if they attend and, and get the CCTV, there's no national sort of database. The police have got no national database of images like they have a national database of uh, uh, fingerprints and DNA. And if you look at the clothes they wear, and there are some, some distinctive marks there. So they've got nothing to uh, fear from being identified. Let's say the small 1% who do get identified... Mm. We've got a Conservative government that's decided that uh, not uh, sending shoplifters to prison is a is a bad thing, so they don't even uh, bother, you know, there's no fear of, of jail. And, and what you have is just a, a broken society where, at every level, people can feel they can just get away with things. If you work hard and play by the rules, then you ultimately you're a fool because yeah. the people who are doing all this wicked uh, criminality are, are making a fortune and they're living the high life while the workers are, are treated like idiots. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems as though, as well, um, shops won't be able to put up with this too much longer. You know, the bigger chains, obviously, have got uh, the ability to write some of it off. But, you know, if you're a small sort of local corner shop and people keep coming in nicking stuff, in the end, the shop will just close down, the street will become a sort of a, a less safe place to go, you know, you'll get that sort of broken window syndrome, suddenly there'll be no shops on the street and suddenly it'll be sort of mayhem everywhere. Absolutely. And, and, and more, these criminals, they just, they feel entitled to steal now. Yeah. So when somebody tries to stop them, as you saw, they, they pull knives or guns uh, and, and the, the shopkeepers are, are assaulted. So what was a simple theft now becomes a robbery. And, and who wants to live in an environment where your local shop is uh, constantly under attack? And it is this... It's, it seems like society has uh, broken down. People can get away with what they want. And it, what it makes, it makes people feel unsafe. And it, there's nothing worse than that. Mm. People should be entitled to feel that they can be safe in their home, they can be safe in the, in the, in the streets. And if they go to the shops, they're not seeing all this uh, criminality. And it has been, as the previous guest said, you know, over the last decade or so, the idea of people uh, stealing from shops has just become something that the police mm. are not interested in. And then these people move on to burglary, they move on to drug dealing, whatever else because they know they can get away with it. And until we start locking people up, that's the only thing that criminals fear. You'll have ministers on here telling us about community sentences and they're utter rubbish. Yeah. I've spoke to criminals, I know criminals. The only thing they fear is going to jail. Yes, exactly right. Well, all you have to do is look at the Abdul Azidi situation in London, where this guy um, 
was out roaming around literally the streets of London for an entire evening from 7.30 at night when he committed his horrendous act against a woman that he knew and two children uh, who may or may not be his, um, wandered about sort of, you know, for about four or five hours. We now know that he walked past MI6's headquarters, you know, um, and basically nobody's seen him. It seems weird to me. The police didn't even put out a description of him the first night because obviously they saw that his name was Ab Abdul and they didn't want to cause some kind of panic. Yeah, I agree. You know, so one Walkery plays its part in this. They're frightened yeah. to death that everybody everybody knew who it would be and, that, and they don't like to confirm that. Right. The second thing is, is in 2015, I had the world's first conviction for pattern recognition. So where, where I looked at, like, like, like my tie, basically, a machine could pick that out. Right. And I found a guy from, for two burglars wearing the same T-shirt. Right. If you look at Adizi, he's wearing very distinctive uh, a T-shirt, he's wearing very distinctive footwear. Yeah. Yet when I said to the Met Police, look, I can help you. I, I, I'm not just going to criticise, I can help you. They said, oh, this pattern recognition is under review. Nine years ago, I, I had that conviction. Mm. The police are not moving quick enough. They're not using... The, the, London is covered in CCTV and they're not using these uh, the images effectively and they're refusing help. And right. that's a really sad thing. That is a really sad thing. And you won't like this either that I'm going to show you, but have a look at this exclusive picture from the Daily Mail. And I don't know whether you've seen this. It shows two police officers in somebody's house watching Netflix and lifting dumbbells. They went to this woman's home. Uh, she was reported missing. And because they were other elsewhere uh, police officers looking for her, um, they were told to chill out at the house. And so they were there for almost four hours while she was missing in the woods. But of, you know, I don't know, sitting there and maybe making themselves a cup of tea. They're, they're watching Netflix, they're chilling out, you know, they're lifting barbells up and down. I mean, this is not the kind of thing that this woman, who, who was luckily found, expected to see on her own internal CCTV cameras. It just shows to me, Mike, it just shows a lack of discipline. Yeah. I've said this and I'll say it again, that uh, when I joined the police, half of the other officers with me had medals on their chest because they're either uh, armed forces of some, kind, well, some type or other. And so you had really disciplined individuals. They've got less and less of that uh, in, the, uh, in the police now. And it, the idea that you would just uh, do that, doss around in somebody's house, mm. misuse their uh, home equipment and dumbbells or whatever mm. else, why, and why were two officers there? One officer could have stood on the door. I remember as a young PC standing outside a door, you know, with, with my big hat on, just, just doing my duty. I wouldn't yes. have gone inside and abused somebody's home. And they're particularly stupid, of course, because everybody's got home CCTV and ring doorbells and Alexa and all this sort of thing. And the more the police uh, becomes less disciplined, the more diverse it becomes, mm. the more woeful the performance. It's yeah. just truly shocking. Let's get back to a situation where we've got... We pick people because of their content of their character, not because of some woke, woke nonsense. Let's have a disciplined police service that does its duty and solves, solves crime rather than messing around like this. Yeah. Well, this is the problem, isn't it, that you and I have spoken about many times, that most of the justice system in this country now is failing at almost every level. And once you get past the police level, you know, we found out today uh, that one of the reasons that Abdul Azidi is walking the streets is that he was granted asylum because the Home Office couldn't be bothered to send a lawyer to his deportation hearing. And so when he told the judge that he had converted to Christianity, he just rubber-stamped it and said, well, the Home Office haven't bothered to turn up, so away you go. Welcome to Britain. What it, I think what frustrates people is that they vote against this all the time and there's no one doing anything about it. So the, we know the Labour Party, they would like lots more asylum to see because the Green Party, the Liberal Democrats. And you think there might be some uh, a right-wing party, the Conservatives, that would do something mm. about it. But, of course, they do nothing as well. So I just get this sense from my friends and colleagues that people just think, who do I vote for? Because nothing's working. The establishment seems to be against the vast majority of working people. So people can just enter the country illegally, nothing's done about it. Yeah. They can commit crime, nothing's done about it. They can do multiple things, nothing's done about it. Why have we got a situation where people can commit serious crimes, sexual crimes, and they're still here? They should be shipped out on day one. We shouldn't even put them in prison and spend money on these people. We have got enough villains of our own without importing them right. from the third world to do all these wicked crimes. Well, this is the thing. The 
left always say, oh, oh, you want to deport all the white people that do crimes or all the British people that do crimes? And I'm like, well, no, obviously, but there's no reason to import more people who are going to do bad things in the streets, in people's homes, in people's shops. You know, we don't know how many people we've imported uh, who have got criminal records because they turn up with nothing. So the idea that you're just going to let everybody in and go, well, they must all be good. Now, go uh, next stop, the Church of England, Lambeth Palace, you know, sign up for the Christianity religion, and away you go. Well, I mean, one of the big problems here is, well, you, you get a big... On the left, they'll always say about misogyny and all this sort of stuff, but then they import people from countries who who have no respect for women and girls at all. Yeah. And you see that... that so the biggest threat here from these people who come in on these alleged asylum seekers are women and girls who, who face awful assaults just like we've seen. And it's just... So they're just bringing this upon the country and it's just not good enough. And everywhere you look... So if, if it's the, uh, the police chiefs, the magistrates, the judges, the lawyers who represent these people, they're all drawn from a very small class of people. And they'll talk about diversity, but they have no diversity of thought no. at all. There's no working-class lads like me are, 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 when in making these decisions. They're all they're all speaking in an enclosed shop. They've got this North London uh, Islington viewpoint, and it needs to change. And the Conservative government have failed this country. They've had over a decade in power yeah. to get a grip of this, and they've just allowed it to go on. They really have. Mike, great to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Mike Neville there reporting in on what is now not just broken Britain, not just lawless Britain, but kind of wild west Britain. Absolutely unbelievable.